know, we just not, wouldn't use the word joy, but uh, the realization, you know, that he is back on flying status and has a mission, and uh, there's no doubt about it, but what you can sense, he's very happy about this. It's important to me to, uh, to do this because of the self-satisfaction involved. I think everyone needs this sort of thing. This is a CBS News special report. Ten years later, the flight of Apollo 14. This evening, a brief look ahead at the next 10 days in space and the profile of Alan Shepard, sponsored by Western Electric, the people who make communications equipment for the Bell system. Reporting from CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening from the Kennedy Space Center. Apollo 14 marks a renewal of this country's program to explore the moon and a personal comeback for its commander. Despite a happy ending, Apollo 13 was a setback for moon exploration. Now Apollo 14 will try to do what 13 did not. The landing site is the same near the Frau Morrow crater in rough terrain believed of much older material than that brought back by the first two moon explorations. Again, two long moon walks are planned and most of the experiments are the same as those scheduled for 13. The main differences, new onboard safety devices and extra supplies are in direct response to the Apollo 13 explosion and the long perilous voyage home in its lunar module lifeboat. The Apollo 14 crew, which departs from here Sunday afternoon, will be commanded by 47-year-old Alan Shepard, the least experienced of space veterans. His teammates will be two space rookies, 40-year-old Edgar Mitchell, who will accompany Shepard to the moon's surface, and Stuart Rusev, 37, who will remain aloft in the command ship. But the crew's story centers on Shepard. On May 5, 1961, inside his tiny Freedom 7, he became the first American to venture into space, a suborbital sprint downrange from Cape Kennedy. In the decades since then, Shepard has suffered illness and frustration, but all the while his attitude has been marked by drive, determination, and care to the last detail. Shepard's first space vehicle was a one-man Mercury capsule boosted aloft by a slim little redstone rocket. His flight lasted only 15 minutes and covered 300 miles. Looking back, Shepard recalls not the drama, but the details. There are two things, basically, uh, that uh, struck me, as I recall, and, and then and still do now. One is the fact that uh, I expected a lot more vibration from the launch rocket than we got in those days. Uh, uh, it was a lot smoother ride, at least the power portion of the flight was a lot smoother than I had expected. And, uh, and secondly, uh, I think the fact that I was able to uh, to act and talk rationally during the short period of weightlessness that occurred was a, was a, quite a satisfaction to me because perhaps you may remember back in those days there were a number of cynics that, that felt that, that a person wouldn't be rational after five minutes of weightlessness. The first American in space became an instant hero, but disappointment was not far behind. An ear disorder impaired Shepard's hearing and balance and left him assigned to a space program desk job. This gave Shepard time to go into business, banking and real estate, which soon earned him a fortune. But business interests were not enough. Alan Shepard wanted to fly in space again. To do this would take time, and he determined to stay in shape. That determination is described by Richard Minns, who ran a health club where Shepard worked out. Uh, he's not a typical human uh, being. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's a super person. He's a super guy. Uh, he's a super person mentally, intellectually, uh, and physically, and uh, maintains that status uh, uh, through a standpoint of pride and uh, uh, ego. And when he comes in for his uh, exercise routine and his workouts, he stays with his exercise routine, he stays with the workout, because I think that to him is sort of a religion. It's something that he has to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a preventative medicine. Uh, it's uh, a medicine to uh, 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 protect him against the aging uh, process. Shepard kept up his space program activities, but the ear problem remained until he heard about a doctor who had developed an operation for his condition, although success was not guaranteed. Shepard took the chance, had the operation in 1968, and was reactivated for space flight by Dr. Charles Berry, the astronaut's physician. No, I don't think anyone can question Al's uh, tremendous 
tremendous motivation to do this mission. Uh, he, if, if I can just quickly re review the kind of things that happened, you know that uh, Al was selected uh, initially to fly the, the initial uh, mission in, in uh, Mercury, and uh, he was selected because of some qualities which he, uh, which he exhibits, which really, he's a very self-sufficient ind individual. He's very self-contained and, and extremely self-sufficient in that regard, and I think that was something that was very badly needed in that first kind of a mission. Interestingly enough, he's been able to, to, to take that same personality and to deal with it in a team concept to where he has three people involved and not just himself as, a, as an individual. He would like to have flown in, in the early Gemini, first Gemini mission, early Gemini mission anyway. And unfortunately, he had this many years uh, develop uh, prior to that time. And then uh, we had to ground him. Now, he maintained a motivation to fly during all of that period of time. Uh, he has been steadfast in that. He, he has wanted to do it. He's been goal-directed that way. If there's any Al is, it is goal-directed. Shepard's dedication did not always make him an easy man to like. One of his best friends, Deke Slayton, boss of the astronauts, says Shepard had his troubles making friends. I don't think he's the... Uh type of individual that probably takes to people and develops a close friendship on a short notice. He's not, uh, well, if you're going to try to compare him with people in the original seven, for example, you had uh, John Glenn and Wally Shira, who were both great extroverts and uh, just an entirely different kind of personality. Al's not that type of personality. The last word on Alan Shepard is determination and dedication belongs to the men who train long and hard with him and will fly with him on Apollo 14. First, Stuart Rusev, then Edgar Mitchell. Yeah, I think there's something different about Al. He's probably one of the uh, most talented people in, in our business that, uh, that I've come across, you know. He's, a, he's extremely uh, uh, cool and, and, and from a flying standpoint, you know, it, and he's always right to the heart of the problem. Al has a responsibility for the overall success of this mission as far as the crew is concerned. He exercises it well, but he allows Stu and I to do our jobs and do them to the best of our ability. And so uh, I haven't seen any temperament that you talk about.